Hi everyone. All right, so I've had people asking me what 3D programs do I use in my day-to-day -day 3D work. So I thought I'll just put a video together explaining what programs I'm using and why I'm actually using them. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so one of the main programs that I'm always using, and it's an absolute powerhouse when it comes to sculpting. It's the industry standard for sculpting, and that is going to be Pixelogic's ZBrush. So if you guys want to get into any character sculpting, or if you want to sculpt environments, or even a hard surface elements, ZBrush has an extensive tool set that's going to allow you to achieve that. Uh, the entry point for starting ZBrush can be a little bit intimidating because there's so many tools. The UI can be a little bit confusing, but you know what? The community is large. There's so many tutorials online on YouTube and on Gumroad. So if you want to get into ZBrush, then you guys are basically spoiled with an abundance of learning material. And someone that I actually highly recommend if you guys want to get started with ZBrush, his name is Michael Pavlovich. He's on YouTube. This guy has so many amazing tutorials on ZBrush that you can jump into and start learning. So like I said, if you guys want to sculpt characters or animals or do anything with environments or hard surface, ZBrush is going to be a fantastic solution. It's my go-to program. Whenever I need to do anything sculpting related, it has such fantastic tools and I highly, highly recommend this program. All right, and the next program that I use primarily for polygon modeling is going to be Blender. Now, Blender has a really extensive tool set. You can do so much in this program from modeling to lighting, texturing. It's completely up to you. Maybe this will become the program that you use for everything, but I use it primarily for polygon modeling because the polygon modeling tool set is very, very intuitive and extremely powerful. They've got this modifier section that allows you to do so much with polygon modeling. It's a fantastic piece of software. and it is completely free so you can jump in right now and start using this amazing piece of software and some uh, tutors that I recommend on YouTube if you guys want to get started we've got a uh, blender guru we've got Yan Sculps, we've got Ian Hubert and CG cookie these guys have so much incredible learning material out there for blender if you want to get started today but this is my main program for doing any sort of polygon modeling Okay, so the next program that I'm using primarily for hard surface design, so if I want to design weapons or anything mechanical, it's going to be Autodesk's Fusion 360. This is a CAD program, and CAD is completely different to polygon modeling with the way that it handles meshes. Meshes tend to be a lot more dense, and they are completely triangulated as well. But the reason why I'm using this is because if you love to do booleans, this is a dream come true for doing booleans. You can cut out any shape out of CAD geometry and you don't have to worry about topology at all. So it gives you an insane amount of freedom. And CAD programs are usually used by engineers or people that are involved in manufacturing or 3D printing. They want to bring those objects into the real world. So there's a lot of really precise tools that are included in the software, which makes it perfect for anything mechanical or hard surface. So I highly recommend Fusion 360 if you want to get into doing any sort of hard surface design uh, that involves the CAD modeling workflow. Okay, so the next program that I'm using is Daz 3D. This is a free program, and I find this to be a perfect solution for generating posable 3D humans. So you can download this program for free, pose these humans, and even animate them. And I think this is a great solution as well if you may be doing concept art and you want a 3D character in your scene that you can paint on top of, or maybe you want a 3D character or 3D human to export out and use it as a base for sculpting in ZBrush. I know I always export out these characters just so I have a human character in Marvelous Designer to create clothing on top of. So really awesome solution for posable 3D humans that is going to be Daz 3D. Okay, so the next program is going to be Marvelous Designer, and this is a fantastic solution for cloth simulation. So whether you're doing clothing or environmental assets, like maybe you need to create curtains that are blowing in the wind, or create bed sheets or pillows, this is going to be the perfect cloth simulation for you. And I've got tons of learning material on my YouTube and on my Gumroad to get you guys started with this program. It's truly fantastic. They've even recently added the ability to use your GPU's power in the program, which 
which means that you can complete simulations really, really quickly and intuitively directly in Marvelous Designer. So if, you have, uh, if you're a 3D fashion designer and you want to create clothing, this is going to hands down be the best solution for you. So that's Marvelous Designer. Amazing program. I love it so much. And you can jump into learning this program today. Just go and check out my YouTube channel. There's tons of uh, Marvelous Designer tutorials. The next set of programs that I'm using are from a company called Allegro Rhythmic and they've actually been acquired by Adobe. Uh, but anyway, if I'm trying to do any sort of texturing, whether it's realistic texturing or stylized texturing, I'm going to be using a program called Substance Painter. Now, Substance Painter allows you to paint directly onto your 3D models in real time. They have such an incredible tool set and so many cool brushes uh, that you can use for completing different tasks. They even include filters that allow you to achieve certain effects like maybe a rusted or weathered feel in just a matter of seconds. So if you're trying to do any sort sort of texturing I highly highly recommend this program it's my go-to program I honestly cannot see myself using anything else for texturing but substance painter because it is really that good the next program over here is Substance Alchemist. I actually started using this recently. Well, I've been using it for about five or six months now, but it's a fantastic, fantastic program if you're trying to create textures from images. So the program incorporates some artificial intelligence. If you feed an image into the program, it will automatically try its best to create this tileable material for you from that image. So if you've gone out, you've captured pictures of rocks or bricks, and you want to actually turn that into a 3D material, Substance Alchemist allows allows you to do that and it obviously includes some additional tools like adding some filters and additional texturing and weathering on top of your material to bring it to that high quality polish and finish that you can start using in your 3D scenes. So a fantastic program for turning images into tileable 3D materials. The last program over here is going to be Substance Designer. Now this is a node based workflow program, but this program is extremely powerful because it allows you to actually create materials completely from scratch. So if you are incapable of capturing pictures of certain bricks or rock cliffs, you can use Substance Designer to connect a bunch of nodes to actually create those materials from scratch. Now there's some fantastic artists and tutors out there. One person that comes to mind, I hope I'm pronouncing your surname correctly, is Daniel Tiger. So this guy has some really awesome tutorials if you want to get started with Substance Designer. He's got an intro series as well and it shows you how to connect these nodes and just showing you the power of a node-based uh, node procedural workflow to create materials. So if I want to create any type of material, I'm going to use Substance Designer as my solution. If you guys are trying to create environments, and I'm talking about like on an expansive scale, like massive mountains, or just anything invo involving terrain or landscapes, this is my go-to program. It's called World Creator. And what's really awesome about this program, it's in real time. So the results that you are doing or applying to your terrain, you can see those results immediately being applied. It's got some fantastic uh, tools that you can use for creating terrain. I actually created an entire introduction series to World Creator on my YouTube channel. So if you want to jump into that, you want to learn how to create really awesome terrain and landscapes, World Creator is going to be a fantastic solution for you. So for those of you that are interested in really, really good solutions for doing UVs and retopology, I'm going to be mentioning two programs right now. The first one is Rhizome Lab, uh, which is fantastic for doing anything UV related or unwrapping your 3D objects. Like their slogan says, great art requires great UVs. So fantastic program if you want to do UV unwrapping. The next program for doing retopology and creating, you know, like a lower, uh, more optimized uh, mesh if this would really be uh, coming in handy if you're doing like game game res models or just overall retopology it's going to be topo gun uh, i just saw a video recently about topo gun 3 and some of the new tools that they're incorporating and it's truly truly fantastic so rhizome lab and topo gun fantastic solutions for doing uvs and unwrapping as well as doing retopology the next two programs are using conjunction with each other. So once I'm done creating my 3D object, I've textured it and I want to assemble everything together, you know, apply those materials onto my object, start lighting that image and saving out that final 
uh, image. These are the programs that I'm using together. So I'm using Maxon's Cinema 4D, a fantastic piece of software. And the reason why I'm using Cinema 4D as well, well, I'm familiar with the user interface, but it also has some really cool motion graphics tools. If you're into that or doing simulations, it's truly, truly fantastic. And then whenever it comes to lighting my scenes, I'm using Otoy's Octane Render. So this is a GPU based physically correct render engine and you can actually stack GPUs to increase your render times and you're going to get really really good end results. If you really know how to use this render engine you can get photorealistic lighting and photorealistic end results with your images. So a fantastic a program that I'm using. I basically purchased it as a plugin to use with Cinema 4D so I can use them in conjunction with each other. So this is how I'm assembling my scenes and lighting them and bringing it to that final uh, render image that I can save out and then I'll be taking it over to the last program that I'm about to mention. And the last program to bring my rendered image to a final high quality finish is going to be Photoshop. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys are already familiar with Adobe's Photoshop. I'm using it for post work, for color grading, or maybe fixing uh, certain errors that were maybe generated in 3D or painting on top of images. Photoshop is the ideal and perfect solution for me personally. I've been using it for years and you can do so much in Photoshop, but it's the perfect post work tool for 3D artwork when it comes to, like I said, doing the color grading or painting on top of images. So that is going to be Adobe's Photoshop. Okay, so I know I've mentioned a lot of programs that might seem a little bit intimidating to familiarize yourself with so many different 3D programs, but when you're working in 3D, chances are you're probably going to need to learn another piece of software. I know that you definitely get people who are purists that try to stick to one program, uh, but honestly I would say that you should remain a student, keep learning. There's these other tools that have been created that can make certain tasks a lot easier for you as well and introduce you to new workflows and like I said just new tools that can make the process of creating 3D objects and 3D artwork really intuitive and fun. So I always make it my duty to see what's new in the industry, see how it can benefit me and how it can actually fit into my workflow and I'll go ahead and incorporate those programs into my workflow as well. So that's how I'm creating the majority of the images you're seeing on, on my art station. It really depends on the end task. Sometimes I'm not using all of those programs at once. I might use four of them, maybe six of them. It really depends on what I'm trying to do. All right, so I hope that helped you understand what programs I'm using to create my 3D images. Maybe you guys will start using them as well. But anyway, stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials on this channel. I truly appreciate the support and goodbye.